This anointed teaching by Pastor Warren Graham comes to you from Christian Family Church, Emelachlini. Something is happening in South Africa. Yeah, praise the Lord. God is good. He's always good. And He's only good. Hallelujah. And so we're going to talk about being the salt of the earth this morning. As Chief Justice has started with being the salt of the earth, being a flavorous uh, uh, taste in Parliament, we are going to talk about being the salt of the earth. Our, our theme for the year is fruitfulness. And we've been looking at a few things in terms of God's kingdom that have to come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, I, I, I was more specifically focused on bringing in a, a new culture, the kingdom culture, uh, the culture of the kingdom into society that we live in, not holding on to that which we have received from humans or tradition, but bring in the culture of the kingdom, the so much needed reality of heaven into heaven. That is what we are called to be. We have to infiltrate and saturate the earth with the love of God. So we look at a few different aspects that we have established in Christ. We are kingdom people. Somebody say kingdom people. In other words, we know who we are. Our identity is secured in Christ Jesus. Amen? We are kingdom people. We are people of faith, which means we are people of love because faith moves through love. We are people of love. We are people of peace. We protect our peace so that His peace can protect us. We are people of peace, therefore we are people of joy. And we are people of righteousness in the Holy Spirit. We are people of truth. And if we are people of truth, we are a free people. Because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We are also a people of the presence of God. God has called us invited us into a deeper secret place with him so that he can reveal himself to us so that he can reveal himself in us so that he can reveal himself through us to the world around us so taking all of these things into consideration we have to have an influence in the earth there must be an impact of the church in the earth. Because if this is the truth, if God's word is the truth, there must be an influence from the church's side. Am I right? And, and, and who is the church? We are the church. It, it's not just the pastor. It's not the, just the chief justice. It, it, it is we who are the church. And, and we need to have a tangible impact. If the word of God is the truth, we have to have a tangible impact wherever we go. The kingdom of darkness, listen to me now, the kingdom of darkness cannot prevail against the kingdom of light. It cannot prevail. Many people are very devil-obsessed. And all they see is what the devil does and how the devil is, 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 is so crazy and evil and all of this. But they have forgotten the, the word of God. God is God. There is no one else but him. He is God alone. And 1 John 4 verse 4 says, Little children, you can be certain that you belong to God and have conquered them. That is the Antichrist that infiltrated the church. For the one who is living in you is far greater than the one who is in the world. You don't have to be intimidated by the devil. You don't have to be intimidated by circumstances. When Jesus slept in the bed, there was a storm that came up. It wanted to kill everybody on that boat. And Jesus stayed in peace and he spoke to the storm. That which was inside of him, he released to the outside and the storm was quiet. I'm, I'm preaching much better. And what you are responding. I, I, I believe that is why Jesus taught us that 
that, that, that we are His people. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He, 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 you know, when Jesus spoke, He didn't say anything just to have a conversation. When He spoke, it was words of life. When He spoke, it brought change. When he spoke, things were moved. Things happened. And when he speaks, transformation takes place. We are being changed from glory to glory, even to the same image of Christ. So Jesus speaks on the mountain of Beatitudes, and he speaks in Matthew 13, verse uh, 5, verse 13 to 16. He says, your lives are like salt among the people. But if you, like salt, become bland, how can your saltiness be restored? Flavorless salt is good for nothing and will be thrown out and trampled on by others. Your lives light up the world. Let others see your light from a distance. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it is placed where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others, so that the commendable things you do will shine as a light upon them, and then they will give praise to your Father in heaven. You remember our, our fruitfulness uh, uh, portion of Scripture says that we bear fruit to the glory of the Father. He says, let your works be in such a way that God will get the praise. He didn't say, uh, um, let's, yeah. When Jesus spoke to his disciples, all the people sitting, sitting on the mountain of Beatitudes, on the mountain, from the mountain of Beatitudes, you can see the Sea of Galilee. It's just at the bottom there. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place to this day. It's a beautiful place. And Jesus sits on this rock. Oh, he stands. I don't know. And he's got his, his little microphone on and, and, and the sound is good and everything. Yeah, I don't know how it worked, but it, it, it was amazing. And so Jesus says, hey, guys, I want you to try to bring flavor to the world. I really want you to, to give it your all to try and be salt in the world. I, I want you to, to, to try and switch on a light. Get a battery or a bulb. And as times change, you will need to get a LED. So, 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 no, 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 no. He said, you are the salt. The, the, don't try to be salt. You are salt. Don't try to be light. You are the light. You are the LED, man. You don't have to get an LED. You are the LED. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of this earth. That is who you are. That is what you've been called to be. As a believer in Christ Jesus, this is who you are. And you see, the, the church is a, is, a, is a beautiful place. It's a, it's a beautiful It's a beautiful. Uh, thing it's not a building it's a people it's a kingdom people it's a people of peace it's a people of praise it's a people of presence it's a people of power and and it's a people and and we set standards yes we do we set standards of worship and morality and and compassion and we remind people how to live but more than not these values get locked up inside these four walls. We like to influence the other members of the body. Instead of actually influencing the value systems of the outside, in your house, your neighborhood, your city, the city of Emelach Leni, the city of my heart, the city of my love. I believe this is God's city. With everything in me, I need this block to really, really start shouting. You guys are very, very quiet. L listen to these guys, man. Come on now. I'll just now switch it around. Don't worry. <laughs> you see, we, we're living in challenging times. And, and the Bible warns us of these times. It, it, it mustn't come as a surprise. It is difficult times. And, and so it is much more comfortable to share my faith with another Christian than to go outside the walls of the church. Somebody say, hey, now. 
So Paul writes to Timothy, his spiritual son, and he says, but you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. So when Jesus says, be the salt of the earth, he says it in context of persecution. He says, don't be the salt whenever you are comfortable to be salt. He says, you will be persecuted. Then be salt. Then be salt. Now this is a good sermon for me. I'm really, let me turn this around and just preach to myself. <laughs> sure. Holy Spirit is really working in my heart and I hope that he's working in your heart as well. You see, but you need to, to know this. People will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander, slaves to their desires. They will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery they will act without restraint bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit they will find delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of the loving God they may pretend to have respect for God but in reality they don't want they, they want nothing to do with God's power stay away from people like these for they are the ones who worm their way into the hearts of vulnerable women spending the night with those who are captured by their lusts and steeped in sin they are always learning but never discover the revelation knowledge of truth let me tell you something if you if you go and do a little bit of research and, and, and i won't uh, recommend this because it's really upsetting to to see what is happening in the so-called church not just in africa but in south africa you will see that this has become the truth there is a cancer that is that is growing in the so-called church Therefore, it is so necessary to live close to the heart of God so that you can discern whether something is of God or not. And, and, and it's easy. It is easy for they are the ones who worm themselves into the hearts of vulnerable women. You can see this. They are not even ashamed of it. They put it on the news. They put it on YouTube. They put it everywhere. They mess around with women in church. I don't want to go into the detail because it's sick. Therefore, we need, to, we need to heed to the call of the Holy Spirit to come into the secret place and stay there. Stay in the secret place. Live from that position. We cannot afford to be in our flesh for one moment. So this last days, this final days, of extremely fierce, difficult for people of God. This is not an excuse not to be, to, to be salt and light. But this is actually the call for us to be the salt and the light in this world. We need to stand up and be what God has called us to be. Some way, somehow, the world needs to see Jesus. Am I right? And God has given us the privilege and the honor to reflect and mirror his love into this world. He's enabled us through the life of Christ that is in us. Paid a expensive price to have you and me to bring flavor and light into his world. Salt had two purposes. The one was to preserve. And I believe that the church is preserving at this stage. We are preserve, preserving so that everything does not go to hell. Literally, that's not just an expression. The other thing is that salt was used to bring flavor to bland food. And Jesus said, in the same way, he sends us out to bring flavor to a bland world out there. Just think of the profoundness of the statement of Jesus here. He says, you are the salt of the world. In other words, he says, you are not the meal. You are part of the meal, but you are not the meal. You bring flavor to the meal. 
a lot of us have the mindset that this is what it's all about. He says, stay away from certain people, and we think that's all the people in the world. No. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He says, I want you to be salt in the world so that people can get to know me. <laughs> Too of, often the church gets caught up in the mindset that it's, that it's just about the salt. Although what is happening here is vital and very significant, we need to add flavor on the outside. We need to be the salt for the outside. Uh, uh, our understanding of being salt is like screwing the top off the, the salt shaker and pour out the contents of it on the, on the side of our plate. And, and it shows us wanting to be together, wanting to have fellowship, wanting to share the love of God, which is a good thing. But we were made to bring flavor to the world. We were made, we were created to bring flavor to the world. We need each other, yes. We need to love, we need fellowship. But we also need to influence. And we cannot forsake the getting together of the saints. That, that is scripture. He says, specifically when you see the day coming closer. Which day? The day that Paul writes to his, to, to, to his spiritual son, the final day. We, we cannot, we cannot forsake. We cannot afford to forsake the coming together of those in the faith. Our times together is to equip us for the influence in the community when we are not together. That's why we get together. Get a salt injection. <laughs> to go out and be a salt shaker and bring flavor to the meal. As we live under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and obedience to the Word of God, we will inevitably influence everything around us. Can, can you understand that? Can you see the, the logic in what I'm saying? Bringing flavor when there's no flavor. Where there is strife, we are the peacemakers. I'm reminded of a song, but fortunately I can't remember it. It's just the, the peacemaker. That was, a, 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 maybe I'll give away my age. So, so <laughs> blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed, you fell asleep this night, I saw you. you. You were going all, you were active, you were excited, there was energy, but now, <laughs> it was them, eh? yeah. So from the third row. <laughs> <laughs> Got me off my story there. We are peacemakers. We are not troublemakers. We are peacemakers. Am I right? We are peacemakers. We are not troublemakers. Wherever there is strife, we bring peace. We don't bring an add to the fight. We bring flavor to the situation. That is who we are. You are salt of the earth. 2 Corinthians uh, 1 verse 4 says, who comforts and encourages, this is Jesus, us in every trouble, so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Be where there is sorrow, we bring comfort. As we have been comforted, we comfort. And all of us have been comforted at one stage or another in our lives. Am I right? And as we are comforted, by the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we can come. Where there's hatred, we bring love and the peace of God into the situation, returning good for evil. What is, it, what is hindering the church to be salt? Although we are called to bring flavor to the world, we are not called to be
Now I forgot the word. We are not called to be of this world because that is not the truth. We are in this world. In the world that God desires to save. But we are not the world and therefore we cannot afford to conform to the world or the way of the world. We need to bring flavor to the world. And if we look the same as the world, We'll be just as bland as them. So, conforming to the world prevents us from being salt in the world. Saltiness can be, can be lost through a, a lack of peace with one another. Mark 9.50 says, salt is excellent for seasoning, but if salt becomes tasteless, how can its flavor ever be restored? Your lives, like salt, are to be seasoned and preserved. Uh, uh, so don't lose your flavor and preserve the peace in your unity, in your union with one another. Protect your peace so that he's protected peace may protect you and if you are tempted to do something that will bring unpeace the opposite of peace uh, pray about it and ask holy spirit if this is the thing that you need to do are you going to contribute by doing what you are that you want to do are you going to contribute to the union of peace or are you going to bring discord Sometimes it, it's a very fine line. Sometimes you think you have to gossip just this little bit. Because I justified in my heart, this is going to be so necessary for this person to hear what that person has said about them. Is it going to add to the union of peace? You can say, Aina. Let's do something. Say this with me. I am a salt shaker. A peacemaker. And not a troublemaker. Jesus says in Luke 14, 34 and 35, he speaks in the con context of taking up your cross and following after denying self. He says, salt is good for seasoning, but if salt were to lose its flavor, how can it be restored? It will be never useful again, not even fit for the soil or the manure pile. If you have ears opened by the Spirit, then hear the meaning of what I said and apply it to yourself. Self-centeredness, in whichever way it manifests itself, will, will hinder you from being salt to the earth family let me be a little bit transparent I've been offended a little bit in this week just a little bit in a week of miracles and beautiful things happening right inside of it you know where everybody is singing your praises somebody comes and says I don't like your tie man Really, purple? For a big guy like you, purple? <laughs> and a pink shirt? It's pink. And for a moment there, just bear with me. I still, I'm still not there yet. Almost, but not yet. For a moment there, I felt very sorry for myself. But this is a nice day. You must feel how comfortable this shirt is. <laughs> it's pink, but it's, <laughs> it's an awesome shirt. And in that moment that I felt sorry for myself, I realized in a flash, I have no flavor to add wherever I go. Nothing. Because where's my focus? on my tie and my shirt and how I feel about you feeling about my tie and my shirt. <laughs> uh, get over it! <laughs> how, how did we explain it last week? I get over it by praying, praying, praying until peace comes. 
by praying and praying until I know I have given my package to God. Praise the Lord for His goodness. He is good, He's always good, and He's only good. Hallelujah. You, you, you see, there's no better way of living in obedience to the Holy Spirit. There's no better way. Can you imagine a car with a GPS and, and you, you, you've been invited to go to a party in Kwamhlanga? <laughs> and, and so they send you the address of, of this party and you want to go to this party in Kwamhlanga. Most of you know where, where, where Kwamhlanga is. Hey, some of us don't. So you put the address into your GPS and you start driving. And so your GPS says, in 100 meters, turn left. In 200 meters, take the off-ramp right. Get on the highway. Within two hours, you're in Armelua. <laughs> and the GPS nohal says, you have arrived at your destination. I had to use that one. <laughs> but Kwamhlanga is in the other direction of Armelua. <laughs> Who would want a GPS like that? But most believers depend on their flesh and the circumstances around them to guide them to go to the place where they feel they should go while the Holy Spirit has been poured out into our hearts to direct us into all truth. And we get to truth, we get to freedom, because he shall, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Come on, man. <clears throat> that man was either Afrikaans or West Indian. <laughs> I've got two, two and a half minutes left, and I've got a lot, of, a lot of things to say. There's not a difference between spiritual jobs and circular jobs. That, that is a mindset that hinders us to be salt in the world. We think, because I have a secular job, I cannot be salt in the world, because it's not a spiritual job. And, and I really desire to have Adi's or Marilisa's job in the church. Because in the church, it's a spiritual job. It's going to be great. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you are awesome people. You really are awesome people. Amen. You are awesome congregation. You are awesome church. I love each and every one of you. But sometimes you let me lie awake. <laughs> sometimes I pray for you a lot. But your job is not a secular job because it's out there. Your job is a spiritual job because of the yes that you said to God. God has called you into a job out there. And because you said yes, God has sanctified that job to be a spiritual job. And if you would understand that you are called in the spirit for ministry within your job, you can work with a, with a focus, with a new focus at your job and understand that it's not about just getting money or getting through the day or waiting for child out time. I, I, I am here with a reason. I am here for a divine purpose to bring flavor to this company, to bring flavor to this area of, of, of uh, employment. That is who I am. I am salt in the world, and God has called me. It, it doesn't matter what kind of a work it is, whether it's full-time evangelist or missionary, whether it's a dentist or a doctor, whether it's a mining engineer or a shift worker, whether it's an electrician or a plumber, whether it is a stay away, stay at home. Stay away, mom. Stay, <laughs> stay at home, mom. Saying yes to God is what it's all about. Saying yes to God. Everybody in the mother's room, can I have an amen? I can't hear anything. Okay, I see your hands. <laughs> Even if you're a stay-at-home mom, your yes is what sanctifies that job. 
there, there, there's a wonderful book, uh, Spiritual Vocations, that explains the spirituality of all jobs by showing how each job originated with God. Like he was the first gardener. He was the first artist. He was the first coach. He was the first counselor. He was the first lawyer. He was the first doctor. He was, Clint, he was the first boulder. Where's Clint now? No, he's not here even. <laughs> he, he, he was the first boulder and, and so on and so on. That, that is who he is. And if you realize this and, and see that your assignment in life no matter how secular it might feel, have a great spiritual significance, whether you stand behind the pulpit or not, will make it so much easier. In these jobs, we have the privilege of representing and mirroring the heart and the nature of God in all that we do. Bringing Jesus into every sphere of society is what it's all about. We desperately need people who are filled with the Holy Spirit in politics. And hey, we have one. Maybe there's more. We, we desperately need people in entertainment, in medicine, in education, in financial institutions, in every aspect, in transport, in, in, in insurance, I'm just thinking, in, 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 the, in the meat industry. I'm just thinking of a few. <laughs> we need, we desperately need Jesus to be revealed and mirrored because God loves the world so much that he gave his son. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise.